It's been said that if at first you don't succeed, skydiving is definitely not for you. Cloud computing isn't nearly as life-threatening, and if you don't get something right the first time, you can always wipe it out and start over. If you spend 20% of your effort on centralized network management by organizing all of your networks into groups, managing your connectivity all from one place, and securing your networks with a single rule set, and then safely rolling out all of those changes by staging your deployments, you would get 80% of your work done with 20% of effort. Now you might be thinking, Nerd! Wait, wait, hold on a second. Azure doesn't have a way to centrally control your networks, does it? Say hello to the Azure Virtual Network Manager. Now you can set up all of your network management centrally with dynamic groups and instantly set up connectivity in a mesh or hub and spoke topology and you can secure that network with an advanced rule set that can be applied anywhere in just minutes. And to help you learn about all of this safely, I have written a PowerShell script and it's up on my public GitHub linked in the description down below. It'll provision one resource group and 20 VNets spanning eight different regions for prod, dev, and lab environments. Now vote in the comments down below if you would call this kind of thing a playground or a sandbox. Over here in the Azure portal, in the top search box, type Managers. Then click on Network Manager, and in the middle, go ahead and click the Create button. And we start off with the usual suspects your subscription and resource group, and then you give it a name, and you pick your region, and you can even add a description if you like. Then you scroll down. Now go ahead and click over here and select your scopes. And what you see over here is your subscriptions and your management groups that you have access to. If we have network manager control this subscription, I can't have another manager control the same subscription. And this is even more important if you have management groups. The management groups are containers to manage multiple subscriptions. So if you select this subscription and then try to select the management group above it, it's not going to work. These are overlapping scopes. You might be thinking, okay, I should have one manager per environment, you know, one for dev, one for prod, and you could, but this is much cooler than you realize. You can use one network manager for everything. And I'll show you how you can create different groups of networks in the manager so you can slice and dice things up the way that you want. Now, as for your features, we have two options, connectivity and security. And you will want both of these selected, and I'll show you more about them once the build is complete. Click Next and add your tags, and then go ahead and create your network manager. Now, if this is your second or third time watching an Azure Academy video and you haven't subscribed yet, Click the button so my YouTube overlords will promote this channel and I can keep making free content just for you. After all, I do it all for you. Welcome to the Network Manager. This is where you can invest 20% of your effort and get 80% of your management done in just a few clicks. At the bottom, we have the main features here of centralized management. Defining our groups, then configuring our settings like connectivity and security, and then controlling the deployment of those settings across your network. So let's start with groups. Click add at the top and then give your group a name and a description. I'll call this one prod. Now we have two ways of creating groups, dynamic and static. Here in the dynamic section, you select a parameter. If you've been really good with your naming conventions, this will be pretty easy. Or maybe you've got uh, tag resources for like environment equals prod, or you've got specific resource groups for dev and others for prod. For your operators, round up the usual suspects like, contains, not contains, equals, etc. Another 80-20 rule benefit here is the infinite scale of your networks. With dynamic groups, the connectivity can be added to any new networks that you create in the future that match your dynamic group criteria. And so I'll use the parameter of name and the operator of contains and the condition of prod. Then you click the preview resource button to see all of your results. When things look good, go ahead and click next. Now maybe you couldn't find the perfect group dynamically, or you already know the VNets that you want to include. If so, you can make a static assignment. So I'll just search here for the word lab, and then just check the boxes for those virtual networks and click add at the bottom. When you're done, hit the review and create button. Now the cloud can smell fear, so don't be afraid to try multiple combinations until you find the perfect list. And by the way, if you can figure out how a conglomeration of floating water particles can detect human angst, please leave a comment below and share with the group. 
On the left, go ahead and click on configurations and then click to create a configuration. At the top, we have two options, connectivity and security admin. Go to connectivity and then hold off on giving it a name for just a second because we want to start with our network topology. We have two options, mesh and hub and spoke. Now, by default, every virtual network allows communication inside itself, but it's isolated from everything else. And your topologies are established through something called peering. This is where we allow two or more VNets to route traffic between them using private IPs. And one thing to know is that data that travels across a peer does have a cost. And I'll link to this doc here in the description down below. In a mesh, each VNet is connected to every other VNet. Now, since the cost of peering across Azure availability zones or across regions is higher than peering inside of a region, there's a checkbox over there that you can choose to enable mesh connectivity across regions if you want to. Now you can select the network groups that you want to mesh. And now that we know what we're doing, we can give it a name and a description. So I'll call mine peer-mesh-dev. Then click Add. Then we'll go back and let's create a hub and spoke for our prod group. And this is where we have a central VNet that all others will connect to before they can talk to each other. This is beneficial if you have shared services like a file server or monitoring resources, and many customers have used hub and spokes to control their networks with a central firewall. And we'll get to security in just a minute. Now first, we have to select a hub. And this doesn't have to be a hub in your existing groups. And then we have a very cool option to delete existing peerings. And that's definitely something I would recommend. This would replace all existing peerings on the networks that are in that group with the peers that are controlled by the VNet manager. And because we have a controlled rollout feature in the manager, I would just check this box and set up everything now. Speaking of groups, let's add some to our hub and spoke. Go ahead and click the add network groups. Now up here, you can choose from any one of the groups that you've already created. Once you're done checking boxes, hit the select at the bottom. Now we need to set the connectivity options just like you would for any other peer. So you're definitely gonna wanna check the direct connectivity. That'll enable communication within the group. And then if you're going across regions, you can check the box for global mesh as well. And then if you wanna communicate back to on-prem through the hub, go ahead and check the use gateway. Give your connectivity a name and a description and click add. Now let's jump over to the security configuration. Now a security configuration is a collection of multiple rules and you have a lot of options. Up until now, you've either had centralized firewalls or multiple network security groups to lock down your network traffic. And this kind of gives you the best of both worlds. It'll centrally control your network security like a firewall would, but at no extra cost, just like an NSG. And these security configurations will even take precedence over existing network security groups that you have. And these security rules will help you to create sets of multiple rules for something like Active Directory or Azure Virtual Desktop. And we can package all of those things up and then apply it to all of the networks in your group at once. And unlike network security groups, we can manage these rules all from one place across multiple regions, subscriptions, or management groups. And that'll all make managing your changes and updates a breeze. Now I'll call this configuration common ports and I'll add a new rule collection. So go ahead and click to add a new rule. And it looks very similar to the other firewall or NSG rules that you've seen across Azure. And I like to name my rules so that I know what they're doing at a glance. So this rule is going to be allowed. The direction is outbound and the rule is controlling ICMP, and it's controlling ping on my virtual network. And in my deny rules, I have the same thing. And in this case, deny RDP and SSH from the internet. Now, once you have your rules complete, you're ready to start your rollout. So on the left, go ahead and click deployments, and then at the top, deploy a configuration. And no matter if this is your initial configuration or you're pushing out an update, this is the same process. You go ahead and select your type of configuration, connectivity or security. Then you select which particular configuration you want and what regions you want to target. And when you select the region, all of the VNets that are in your groups that are located in that region will get the configuration. Click the deploy button at the bottom and in a few moments you'll have the progress here and then you'll see that the rollout has been done in just a minute. 
And that was the 20% of investment that you have to make. It's that simple. Now, if we go over to our virtual network and look at that side of things, on the left, you've got a blade now for Network Manager. You can check in here and see the configurations that are applied for your connectivity and your security rules. Now, if you have a hub and spoke topology, then you can check your peerings and see all those different connections. However, if you chose a mesh network and then you look in peerings, you're not going to see anything in here. You just have to rely on the network manager, which is fine because that's the way you should be doing things anyway. Follow the 80-20 rule and focus on those things. It will always give you the best bang for your buck. Like every time you share an Azure Academy video with three people, a puppy or a kitten gets a hug and you can't put a price on happy learning.